Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt, also known as the king of armor destruction, armor wizard, Zap Zap. We have a body armor demo today from our friends Turtle Armoring Solutions. They are a vendor over in Europe. I do tend to test armor from all over the place and there are advantages of that depending on where you live if you're trying to procure armor. A lot of the US vendors can't ship outside of there because of ITAR. So if you are in Europe or China or some other country, having those different vendors in those different countries can play to your advantage. This is a 100% pure polyethylene plate sample. Let's take a closer look at these and see what we're going to do today. In full transparency, Turtle Armoring Solutions sent these over for us to demo with no strings attached. We do have a workflow spreadsheet for these plates that we are going to adhere to to the best of our ability because I think Turtle Armoring Solutions is trying to see which one of these particular designs will pay off the most. We have two different samples here. Sample number one is 25.7 millimeters thick or 1.012 inches. It weighs 3.745 pounds or 1.7 kilograms. Measurement wise, 10 and a quarter by 12.75, so a little larger than a 10 by 12. Both samples are multi-curved, so we've got a curve right here and a curve right here, and depending on your body type, usually multi-curve plates fit most everyone a lot better than a single curve or no curve at all. That's what she said. Now, if this is the first time you're viewing my YouTube channel, we do all of our body armor demos completely different than everyone else on YouTube or after worst case scenario. These demos today will be a little on the different side because we have a workflow that he would like us to complete to see how well these will perform against certain threats. So we're gonna have a little bit of uh, variability there, but we have a shot list that we're gonna maintain, but we're after worst case scenario. Since this is rifle armor, we shoot at 45 feet. And we also shoot at zero degrees, again, because that is worst case scenario. We use a giant clay briefcase filled with Roma plastiline, a number one clay from Shavant. That's the same clay that the NIJ uses, but they have it in an oven all day long, and they're only allowed to keep it out for an hour, and they have to return it for three. They drop a giant, like, two and a half inch stainless steel ball on it. And if the dimple is like 19 millimeters, that is certified for back face. It's around 50 to 55 degrees outside today. So I can't keep that clay at temperature. I have been heating it up. So we're looking at a representation of what back face could be. If you see something like 60 to 70 millimeters in my clay and the NIJ's eyes, that would be failing. Since this plate is 100% through and through ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, there is no need to drop it on his face two times as a preconditioning test per the NIJ standards. And since again, it's 100% pure polyethylene, there is no concern about the strike face going out to the entire edge of the plate. I can feel that it is very rigid out there. We use a chronograph whenever possible. We have a ProConal PAL digital D as well as a Garmin 0C1 and the new Athlon Optics Doppler radar chronographs. So we actually have three data sets and we're trying to compare the chronographs and see how they do. Typically with our light screen, it's very sensitive to where the sun is in the sky and it can actually throw the velocity off a little bit. So with those three data sets that we can compare and get a average of what our velocity is because we need to know the velocity of that round. Some of the specifications that Turtle Armoring Solutions would like us to shoot wants us to maintain a specific velocity and or higher. So that way we have that instant feedback to know that we're getting that velocity. And finally, we put a spreadsheet here at the beginning and the end. We kind of foreshadow all the threats that we're going to shoot at it. In the end, we do a teardown so we can kind of look at the different materials that they are using to make up this plate. We can confirm if they are using an edge to edge strike face or not. And then we send you on your merry way. I do want to remind everyone that I'm not an NIJ lab. So if you see a threat stopped or penetrated here, you should always defer to the manufacturer to produce accredited, recent, and frequent lab results showing that those threats can be stopped. And on the flip side, if you're the manufacturer and you see me stop some kind of insane threat such as M993, you should send that off to a lab and have that added as a special rifle threat to your panel. And I also want to remind everyone before we get into the testing that because I'm not in a lab, I have a limited amount of plates that I can play with. So sometimes I have to place more shots on a plate than what the lab would do. A lot of the lab testing for NIJ is three shots or less, and they get a new plate. We don't have that luxury out here, so sometimes we have to place more shots on a plate. And just because I get a six or seventh penetration doesn't necessarily mean that that plate is bad. Sample one, plate one is strapped in and ready to go. Per his workflow, we're gonna start off with M855 from a 16 inch and go up. Typically with our polyethylene plates, they will struggle with M855 past a 10 and a half inch barrel because it has a conical steel penetrating tip right around 4950 RHC. It has a lead core. 2896. 3025, 3029. 3041 and 3031. 
3042 and 3034. Easy enough on this because he wants to check back face. Here was our 16 inch, 20, 22, and 22. All those are considered fair hits. That one may be close, but I'm going to say that's two inches. No way, guys. We're stopping M855 from a polyethylene plate. So he must be having it pressed very, very tightly. With a lot of pressure to make that happen where it's a really high end polyethylene. Back face wise, that 16 inch shot, 11 millimeters, nothing to write home about. That second shot of 22 is the worst, right around 40 millimeters. This guy right here, 16. Again, this is just a representation of back face. It's really hard to judge on my clay, but we're looking at it just a general idea of it. But we're stopping M855 from a polyethylene plate. That's amazing, folks. Now we'll go on to the NIJ Level 3 Threat and or even the NIJ 07 RF1 and 2, and that's M80 Ball 145, 150 grain full metal jacket. This particular Winchester lot has a bi-metal jacket, meaning that there is a ferrous metal in the jacket and you could argue that that steel is harder to defeat than say a copper jacket. We have a 22 inch TC compass we're looking for 2750, 2780, 2850. So that's 100 feet per second over spec. I apologize. This is surplus so I can't really control it without loading my own. 2800. Six, so that's a little better. Shots number one and number two, those are fair hits. Plenty of space left on this plate for any subsequent shots. No pass throughs, folks. Quite the dimple there, it's like a square, but it was stopped. It looks like we are starting to delaminate the plate. Again, for back face. If I can get in there. That one's right around 45 millimeters. And this one's going to be right around 43. It looks like there was something else in there beforehand that kind of pushed that. So 44 millimeters. So about right at the limit. Again, seek official documentation from Turtle Arming Solutions for the threats that were stopped. I think maybe we saved the spot on this for our Plus P Plus M80 from the 24 inch, which is going to give us maximum velocity there, like 2,900 feet per second. Maybe we shoot that down there in a second when we're done. Our final shots involve our M193 and 556 NATO. It's a 55 grain full metal jacket known for popping steel, but polyethylene can usually stop it, no problem. If this is stopping M855, I have a feeling it will stop it, but he's added a little twist. What a twist. We're gonna place two shots right on top of each other from the 16 inch and see what happens. Thirty-one fifty-five and thirty-one sixty-eight. Thirty-one oh one, thirty-one thirteen. Sorry about that, folks. We were way too low on the plate. Let's just do this center of mass. Thirty-one forty-five and thirty-one thirty-one. Our first two shots were down there. Those are edge shots. Definitely not a fair hit. So our Follow-up two shots were right there. I tried to stack them, but I walked a little bit, but that's about a half inch from each other at the most. Place those bets in the comments below. Hey, no pass through on the fair hits. And I think on these guys, they only went through because they bur burrowed out the bottom of the plate. And I guess that first shot was probably stopped and that second one was the one that burrowed down. But interesting, this polyethylene is something else. If we're able to stop 22 inch M855 and stack shots of M193, back face on a 308 is to be expected. That's a lot of muzzle energy to impart. This is doing rather well. I didn't bring the 10 and a half inch, otherwise I'd shoot some M855 a1 at this from the 10 and a half inch, but I have a feeling because that penetrator is larger and harder that it would go through. Let's move back to plate number one and hit it with the same two 30 caliber threats, our plus P plus M80 and our mild steel core 762 by 39 
which that was actually 100 feet, 130 feet per second over what the NIJ spec calls for. I think they call for 2450. Those are hand loads of mine using CFE Black. Very, very good load if I do say so myself. 29.52 and 29.44 off the Garmin. And I shot that one way too high, folks. Way too high. Easy enough shots of the M80 and then the mild steel core up there now. I think because of how long that trigger pull is, I pulled that guy because I wanted to be right there. That is not a fair hit. And the unpredictability of our edge shots goes to show you here. Place those pins and below. R oh, raggy. Now, this did not, the mild steel core did not penetrate through the entire thickness of our polyethylene. It actually pushed up and out. But our M80 ball was stopped. And that back face on that is a lot less than the plate number two. I would go ahead and say that your sample material number one is a far superior material, 29 millimeters back face. This particular plate was even lighter than sample number two. I think at this point we've satisfied his workflow and shown that this sample is very, very capable for what it is for. I hope he will accompany lab testing to show that this will stop M855 from the 3150 feet per, or 3115, I think, feet per second lab spec. Very, very good job. Let's tear these down. Paging Dr. Matt to surgery. Paging Dr. Matt to surgery. Now for a fan favorite, the teardown. That's where we get to look at the guts of our plates to see what they are made of. Turtle Armony Solutions has asked that I not provide any specific measurements for how thick any of the internal materials are. But since this is 100% pure polyethylene, the measurements that I take on the outside are pretty darn close, so you can make some assumptions there. And then plate number one, the only pass-throughs that we had that weren't even pass-throughs were the edge shot of our mild steel core and then that edge shot of M193. Otherwise, M855 up to the 22-inch was contained as well as the stacked shot of M193. This appears to be pressed as well. It almost, again, looks like it's pressed in some layer sections and the sections are then put together, but it is still very rigid. The other one, I was able to start peeling the layers away and this one in theory has more shots on it. Again, all of that is encapsulated inside of the panel. I can't tell if this is a different type of polyethylene again, because there's no branding. But with all that being said, that's all she wrote folks. Polyethylene stopping M855 from the longest barrel length. Very, very impressive. Well, everyone, after today's test, I may be rethinking using ultra high molecular weight polyethylene plates for my kit. Traditionally in the past, M855 and hardened steel core projectiles have always been an issue against them. But this particular mix of polyethylene, whatever it is, and however it's pressed and the heat and pressure and all the fancy stuff that go into building these materials allowed us to stop M855 from a 22 inch barrel. We haven't done that since we tested that Prime Armor level three and that thing was I think 1.3 inches thick and this is doing it at 1.1 inches. We were able to even stack two shots of M193 on top of each other without any issue. I imagine I could have stepped that up to the 22 inch and done the same but we might have been pushing our luck there and I had a workflow that I was asked to follow on this plate and we I think we did a pretty good job and we deviated a little towards the end but I wanted to be a little bit mean to this plate so I can keep that you know king of armor destruction moniker at the time of recording I have no pricing from turtle armoring solutions on these particular offerings so hopefully if this stuff goes live he will have his website up and running at that time and as I mentioned since he is over in Europe he should be able to ship his products into places where US manufacturers and retailers may not be able to with all that being said it's time for me to get the heck out of here but at the end of all my videos I take a moment to thank all those who helped make these possible because there's a lot that goes into them number one is my family Deacon comes out here and helps us as well as Amy she likes to push the button on the camera from time to time and she helps me do all the yard work out here as well as sorting things from my dad's estate number two are my patreon and YouTube channel members I have a campsite in the description below I can't tell you what's in there in terms of different manufacturers and things but it is a landing page there's affiliate codes and discount tracking links in there and what those do is they earn me a sales commission usually pretty pretty tiny and what I do with all that is I put 
put it right back in the channel by either buying supplies to make up some of this ammunition or buying a firearm or a different barrel length so that when we come out here and do these demos to get you guys data, we have those available to us. Number three is Turtle Armoring Solutions. Again, in full transparency, sent us these 100% pure polyethylene plates to destroy with no strings attached. And of course, number four is you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range. Thank mm -hmm. you.